England heard little of all this, but what it heard convinced it that this idea could only fly in the face of all experience. Have you heard the latest crazy idea about aero engines? Some Air Force chap, Whittle, I think his name is, or something like that. Yes, something about using gas, 500 or 600 degrees temperature. Nothing could take a temperature like that. Why, the whole thing would explode in his face. But across the fields of Leicestershire, where Squire Osbalston once ran his 30 miles a day, and Nimrod talked horses all night as the port went round, a new music began to mingle with the sound of hoof and horn, the whining cry of a gas turbine running sweet and true. But as yet, only for a moment, Time and time again, they saw the instant of success dissolve once more into weary hours of failure. I'm sorry to say we've had another blade failure. We were running at nearly full speed, and one of the blades came off. If we could only get another 50 degrees centigrade, it will do the trick. Yes, please do. I'm sure we're almost there. They were almost there. And in the final months of World War II, the idea was not only aloft, but on active service. And as the British meteors tore into the flying bombs, jet met jet in combat. short years, the gas turbine has burnt its fiery mark into the calculations of engineers and economists alike. Yesterday a hope in the minds of a dogged few. Today, manpower and money on a national scale are flowing into its development. For in this latest wonder of applied science, Britain sees a source of her future wealth and welfare. To the birthplace of the jet are coming students from all the world to take their first peep at this child of Britain's brains. But most vital to a people whose memorials of the poignant past daily remind them of the stark needs of the present is the fact that this invention places in their hands an export attractive to nearly every progressive country overseas. In the factories whose devoted labor sustained the fighter pilots through the days of peril, skills famous the world over are now working to capacity on foreign orders for a new prime mover, at once cheap, efficient, simple. And in the heart of London, the company which pioneered the jet now adds to Britain's earnings of foreign currency by the sale of licenses abroad to grant your company a license under these patents and an option under the other 300 or so which apply to gas turbines in general mm -hmm. on the terms I gave you yesterday. Meanwhile, screaming from the rooftops to the stratosphere, the jet is opening realms of height and speed hitherto unknown to British test pilots like John Cunningham and John Derry. The greatest height we've been to so far has been 59,446 feet. That is nearly 12 miles high and about double the height of Everest. We have achieved, uh, exceeded the speed of sound in the DH-108 in which we've done most of the work. And uh, contrary to opinion, this has no physical effect on the human body. History, they say, is but a series of exploded ideas. Each day, each hour, the jet propulsion gas turbine is making history before our eyes, piling record upon record, breaking record, shattering the accepted ideas and limits of the piston engine age.
today, British engineers are foretelling as great a future for this marvel on the ground as in the air. In workshops which were known to Watt and Stevenson, they are now forging a second industrial revolution based on the gas turbine. Soon, a cracked British Railways Express will be gas turbine hauled. Says Chief Engineer Hawksworth of the Western Region. Two locomotives uh, powered by gas turbines are at present under construction for the Western Region of the British Railways. We hope to use them to haul the famous Cornish Riviera Express, and we believe they will be capable of very high average speeds. From other furnaces are coming the special secret formula metals to start the new power source on its career at sea. Soon, one of Britain's largest tankers will be equipped with a marine gas turbine engine designed to give maximum performance on the cheapest of fuels. I just had a communication from the company in which they say that our gas turbine is nearly ready. We're all ready to accommodate it and test it out under sea-going conditions. But Captain McDougall will not be the first skipper to sail under gas. For already under trial is the first gas turbine warship, His Majesty's experimental gunboat number 2009. By land and sea and air, the story is the same. From Britain's laboratories and factories and airfields, the whistle of the jet is spreading all around the globe. A contribution of dimensions yet unfathomed to mankind's mastery of space and speed and power. Cadet of 1926, his Air Commodore Sir Frank Whittle, KBE CB FRS. Today, the little company in the disused foundry has given birth to another mighty field of industrial endeavor. And now, behind the lonely pioneers of an idea, there stands the science of two continents. A century ago, the jet propulsion gas turbine did not exist. In a quarter century, it has given us a vision of the sounds and shapes of future time. What wonders will the jet have wrought? A quarter century from now,